Do you find pole spins really tricky or feel super sore in your arms after pole? This is very common for new polers who go straight into lifting their entire body weight. Here are 15 pole moves for complete beginners who feel like they have no strength in their arms yet. These moves will start to gently strengthen your arms without the need to lift your entire body weight so that you eventually can. Dip spin. Start with your inside hand up high on the pole. Step with your inside foot. Swing your outside leg to the side as you grab the pole with your outside hand. Keep turning towards the pole, then bend your inside leg. Bring your outside leg all the way around, right next to your inside foot. Your outside foot would now touch the floor and your inside leg will straighten and come off the ground and swing behind you. Let's take a closer look at what our feet are doing. You'll see here we are keeping our inside foot on the ground until our outside foot comes swinging around to replace it. In this first go, the inside foot comes off just before the outside foot touches the floor. So only one foot is on the floor at one time. In the second go, I kept my inside foot on the ground until my outside foot lands. You can choose to do either. Now let's take a look at what our legs are doing. Your inside leg bends first while your outside stays straight. Your outside leg will bend as it lands. Then your inside leg will straighten immediately to swing around. Keep your outside leg straight until you are ready to land it on the floor. You bend it just before landing so it can stop your spin and take the weight off the inside foot. Kick your leg all the way out to the side. To generate a nice dip, bend your inside leg as you start to face the pole. You can reach out your outside arm as you swing your outside leg around for some flair. You'll grab the pole with your outside hand, just before your outside foot touches the floor. Pirouette. Pirouettes can feel very awkward starting out. It may not take a lot of strength, but it takes a lot of motor planning. Grab up high with your inside hand. Step forwards with your outside foot. Grab behind the pole with your outside hand. Bend your inside leg and start turning under your armpit, or as my pole teacher put it, to help us remember which way to turn. Pretend you are about to sniff your armpit. As you turn around, you need to roll the top hand over the pole. Let's take a closer look. Roll your hand up towards your thumb, to the back of your wrist, then regrip. Release your bottom hand as you face forwards and land your inside leg in front of the pole. If you are finding it hard to balance on your foot, you can turn on both feet instead. Then to test your balance, you can lift your inside leg a little higher than the floor, but still low to the ground.
Your bottom hand is key to helping you balance. Make sure to grab the pole firmly with this hand before lifting off your foot and during the turn. This hand will keep you stable. Keep this arm nice and straight and engage it by squeezing your muscles. I like to try and arch my back as I turn to the pole. Floor pirouette. Kneel down and face the pole. Both hands will be grabbing the pole at the back. You want to place your hands just as you would for a standing pirouette. Your hand that is furthest from the audience will go at the top and your hand closest to the audience will go to the bottom. Your foot on the same side as your top arm will be pointed and the foot on the same side as your bottom hand will be flexed. This is the foot you will turn on. This pointed foot will go around the flexed foot. Your flexed foot will stay in the same position the whole time. So which way do you turn? Turn towards your top arm. Again, just like a standing pirouette, turn towards your armpit just like you're about to sniff it. As you turn around, you need to roll the top hand over the pole. Roll your hand up towards your thumb to the back of your wrist, then regrip the pole. Release your bottom hand as you face forwards and land your inside leg in front of the pole. Okay, let's try to put it all together. To spin faster, you can hover your pointed foot so it's not really touching the ground and getting stuck. As I turn, I like to arch my back and I hold this until I take my first step out of the pirouette. To exit out, I like to stick my inside leg forwards and lead with my head and chest as I stand for a simple and pretty exit. Diamond spin. Kneel on the ground. Grab the pole as you would for a pirouette. Turn on your knees. Turn toward your top arm. Bring your feet closer to the pole. As you turn around, you need to roll the top hand over the pole. Once your back is to the pole and you've regripped your top hand, Start to form a diamond shape with your legs. Lift your body up to spin on the tops of your feet. You want to try and hold the diamond shape for a second. Only close the diamond once your first knee is about to touch the ground. Bring your knees together, take your bottom hand off and swing your legs around. To make a nice diamond shape, Pull up with your top hand and push down with your bottom hand. This will take the weight off your feet, allowing you to spin more easily. See here, I don't engage my arms as much and my diamond is sad and squished. Keep your toes together for a symmetrical diamond. If you feel fancy, you can reach your bottom hand out to the non-existent audience. Diamond spins look so cool when you do them in a row. To do multiple in a row, simply swing your legs to the side and re-grip your bottom hand to push up into a diamond shape. Pirouette to diamond. Step forwards with your outside foot. Grab the pole as you would for a pirouette. The hand furthest away from the audience will go at the top and the hand closest to the audience will go at the bottom. Both hands will be on the back of the pole. Turn on the balls of your feet to start 
again, just like a pirouette turn, you want to turn towards your armpit like you're about to take a whiff. As you turn around, you need to roll the top hand over the pole. Roll your hand up towards your thumb to the back of your wrist, then regrip the pole. Once your back is to the pole, switch to the tops of your feet. Slide down lower by releasing your hand grip. Bring your knees together and take your bottom hand off the pole. Swing your legs to the side. Now switching to the tops of your feet can feel very awkward. I do suggest wearing socks to make it easier to slide. Also to make it easier, you need to create room for your feet. You can't do this if you keep the weight in your feet, as you switch from the balls of your feet to the tops of your feet. You want to quickly shift the weight off your feet to your arms instead by pulling your body up with the top hand and pushing your body up with your bottom hand. This gives you space to switch from the balls to the tops of your feet. This move looks best if you can keep turning and go from standing to diamond smoothly. This will come from practicing the transition from the balls to the tops of your feet as quickly as you can and dropping your body as you do it. Lunge and up. Grab the pole high with both hands. Drop your body down so your arms are straight. You will be in a sitting position. I know it looks a bit funny getting into it, but trust me, we'll put it in a nice combo later. And you'll see how you can transition into this move in a way that looks a bit more natural and makes sense. Stick your front foot out. Pull your arms up and drag that back foot with you. This one looks deceivingly easy, but actually really tired my arms out. To do this in one swift movement, focus on pulling your body up with your arms, rather than bringing your back leg in. Split grip slip. Kneel to the side of the pole, Place one hand at the top and the other down in a split grip. Your index fingers will be along the pole. Your bottom hand's index finger is pointing down and your top hand's index finger will be pointing up. Slide both feet out. I tend to do it one at a time, but they are a split second apart. Then you want to tuck them back in relatively quickly. To make sliding on your feet easier, push down with your bottom arm and pull up with your top arm. To hold your position, you want to try and squeeze your glutes. This is actually a good way to train your split grip. Don't worry, this video is not done yet. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll learn the rest of the 15 moves for beginners with not so strong arms. And there will also be mini routines combining all the moves we have learnt in this video. I'll see you guys over in part two.